The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. For those who don't know, the NHL season has started, and we're very excited about it here on Rising to the Occasion. And also the MLB playoffs. They have been going on, and we haven't been able to talk about them, so we're going to make sure that we talk about the MLB playoffs tonight. Uh, And then we've also got to get into our Heisman watch. A lot of people are going to bring up the Heisman race and who they believe ought to be in the Heisman race, but we're going to give you our Heisman watch list tonight. And we're also going to get into the best bets of week seven in college football. We've been releasing these quite a bit and we've been doing pretty well with a lot of our bets. So we're going to release those to you again tonight. We're going to have all of this and much more today on Rising to the Occasion. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We're so happy to have you here with us and be able to bring you some more content. Uh, We're going to get into it tonight, a lot to get to. But before we do, uh, first, I want to let everybody know where you can find the best sports books and what sports books are even available to you. And that is by going to rising2.com slash bet. Sports betting is a lot of fun. All right. And it, we, we, we always tell people this, don't get carried away with it. We don't want you to get carried away with it and make it into something that it shouldn't be. But sports betting can be a fun hobby to have on the side, along with watching sports and watching what's going on in the sports world. And so we want you to join in that fun. And the best way to find out where to start is by going to rising2.com slash bet. That's R-I-S. S-I-N-G-T-O dot com slash B-E-T. You go there and you bring up this web page and it makes it very easy for you because for one, it gives you all of the sports books that are available in your region. Uh, and two, it will give you the most exclusive offers that all of these top sports books like FanDuel, DraftKings, uh, Caesars, BetMGM, all of these major uh, sports betting apps, these sports books are available to you with exclusive offers. So you go check out the exclusive offers, get signed up and steal those exclusive offers and use that as house money to start your betting uh, and, and start the trails. And it's it's very easy. It's very simple. You go in there and check it out, check out what's available to you. And the most important thing about sports betting, and if you want to actually make money on sports betting, is having multiple sports books to, to compare the odds and, and look and see which sports book has the best odds and that's the best way to find the best odds for whatever bet you're wanting to place on the weekend so maybe you want to place a a nice little wager on the game you go in and you check FanDuel you check check DraftKings you bet all of the others that that you want to check into and you see what has the best odds, and that's how you know how you can maximize your uh, your money that you're re- getting re- in return. So return on investment is much bigger whenever you use multiple sports books, and it's never been easier than going over to rising2.com slash bet. Again, that is R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O dot com slash B-E-T. And if you're in a, an area that doesn't have sports betting, maybe you're not allowed to have a sports book in your, in your uh, state. Uh, Blake, for example, he's not able to do that down in Alabama but he can go there to rising2.com slash bet and it'll still give him some different fantasy sites that he can also make money on uh, on, on betting on sports too. So it's a lot of fun, very easy way to do it. And like I said, it automatically gives you those most exclusive offers when you go over to that website. So again, R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O dot com slash B-E-T. Uh, let's go ahead and get into it, guys. Let's start off by mentioning who I've got here with me. I've got the man from across the city uh, on the other side of Sioux City today. We've got Jeremy. Jeremy, how you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good, then. It's fun to see the NHL get into full swing now in the regular season. Then that's always my big thing. I'm a big hockey fan. I know you are as well, Josh. But even looking on the MLB side, we got a lot coming up. I know the season's winding down for the MLB, getting into the postseason. Then it's been pretty fun for some watching some games and some teams' success. And some teams are kind of battling to stay alive a little bit. But even going into Heisman rankings, I know we still have a good amount of college football left. But I know there's been some highlight players that have been we've been talking about that could be a Heisman mention. But I'm going to cut the chit chat and let's get talking with the sports today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Let's go ahead and start off. Like you said, NHL season finally among us. Uh, 
Jeremy, you're a huge hockey guy. Again, I mean, you're probably a bigger hockey guy than I am. So uh, this is probably even more exciting for you than it is for me because I'm still caught up in college football, you know, uh, and that that is my sport. And, and everyone who watches and listens knows that that's uh, college football is more for for me and, and Blake. But hockey is definitely your sport. Uh, you're definitely the hockey guru. So let's start off with Connor Bedard looking at the young kid going against the kid, Sid the kid, uh, in his first matchup. How, what an ex- exciting matchup. Uh, and, and for this to be set up this way, it couldn't really be drawn up any better than it was uh, for the young kid to be uh, brought into it where he is playing against Sidney Crosby, uh, a guy who had a lot of hype just like he did and now lived up to that hype and became one of the greats, being able to go against the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Penguins and Sidney Crosby, a really fun matchup, honestly. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you look through the entire game. It was a really, really fun atmosphere to watch, like you said, between Connor Bedard and Sid the Kid Crosby. I mean, it's one thing to take the opening face off against Sidney Crosby, but just you have so much butterflies just probably even going up to the opening face off, looking across and seeing your idol, Sidney Crosby. And even the ref, I had another had him mic'd up. I can't remember the name of the ref, but I know he was saying, Sid, welcome back for another year. Then he looked at Connor Bedard and said, Sid, welcome to the NHL, buddy. And then I know uh, Connor Bedard had the respectful audacity to obviously say thank you. Then um, even looking at through the entire game, it was pretty fun to watch. I know um, for Chicago, it was it was their great way to start a season one and no against a really good Pittsburgh Penguins team. Like you look at their lineup, like I said, Jake Getzel, Sidney Crosby, Chris Letang, Gino, Evgeny Malkin. There's so much depth on that roster. It's unbelievable. But Chicago definitely were lights out to get from the get go rolling off a strong game. And um, even getting their feet going right at the get go. I mean, Pittsburgh did take the early lead going into the first, but then Chicago had to bounce back a little bit. Then they got tied up, and then going into the third period, then that was all its history. Then the final score being 4-2, to two, I know. Connor Bedard, great way to start it off, having one assist your first NHL game. And um, that's always a big comments booster. It's one thing to get the first goal out of your way, but even getting like little things like an assist or even yeah. plus minus and your ratios, first point. That's I cute. mean, that points points are a major thing in hockey. And for those who don't understand, you get that by assists and uh, you know by scoring a goal. So uh, it, it it really was. It was a very good showing by him. I think he fit on the ice very well. Uh, and I, that's mm-hmm. what I was looking for because this dude played in junior leagues, and you know he he, he was light years above everyone else there, but. You're stepping into the big leagues now, guy, uh, and mm-hmm. I just I I wasn't really sure what to expect from him there because it's not going to be the same. Is is the talent gap going to close up a lot? But yeah, he got his first assist. Uh, that was one thing. I think he's realizing, man, it's it's hard to win a faceoff against Sidney Crosby the whole night. I know not. He, I know he didn't go against Sid every single uh, puck drop, but he. I think he only went like two for seventeen. Uh, so I mean, mm-hmm. Connor Bedard didn't. He, I think he's realizing, man, I need to speed up on these on these faceoffs. But other than that, I, like I said, I think he he actually fit in very well. Uh, and you know, when when you look at Connor Bedard, do you think the pressure around him is going to impact him? Uh, and, and do you think it's going to impact the team around him? I think so, but. Get these first couple games out of the way, and I think he'll be sitting pretty good. That first game, obviously, is a really big thing going, especially on the road. Especially on the road going into Pittsburgh, it's one thing to go against at home when you're in Chicago, but you're going into PPG Arena. That's one of the most talked about arenas in all of NHL. But um, there's one thing that I do want to bring up a little bit, even before the game started, and. Going into warmups, I know obviously you you know as much as me, Josh. Every rookie always gets to take that first little first little lap. Welcome to the NHL. I was kind of surprised about this just because um, the NHL and Gary Bettman decided to give him a little bit of a of a welcome to the NHL present. Um, they gave him and I can't remember his first name, but it's Kerinsky. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, gave Kevin, him Kevin a Kerinsky. twenty. Yeah, he, they gave him both a $2,500 gift of a fine. I know it's a part of the NHL protocol for player safety and stuff like that, but the thing is you only got one first game in you from the NHL straight from juniors. So from that perspective, I don't necessarily know if the head coach said go and do it or whatever the case is, but – I guarantee you the Chicago Blackhawks organization, they're going to pay that fine and say, 
this this one's on us. The next one's all on you, buddy. But yeah, um, well, and and what I thought yeah. was silly about it too was so I, I was looking into this like really this is a rule. So it's it's an NHL rule that enacted, uh, you know, I think it was last season that requires last all season. players to wear helmets and warm ups. But here's the rule. It's rule nine point six, and it states verbatim it is mandatory for all players who entered the NHL beginning with the 2019-2020 season or later to wear their helmet during the, the pregame warm-up. So if, if he were to have been drafted back in 2018-2019, he wouldn't have had to do this. I, I, I just mm-hmm. thought, I think that's so silly. You're, you're going to expect it for the newest guys, but I, you already have brain damage. We don't really care about your head. <laughs> like I, I don't understand the ruling behind that. I need a I need whoever it is in the NHLPA to to understand uh, to to that who does understand why it was made this way uh, to explain that to me because I don't get that how just because you were you were drafted after 2020 uh, then or I guess after 2019 then you have to wear a helmet during your your warm ups that just seems silly yeah to me that's kind of stupid but <laughs> I understand but. I don't make the rules. I wish I made the rules because I would make them pretty fun. Um, Gary Bettman, I need to get a hold of you, buddy, because we need to alter these rules a little bit. I mean, you look at other guys like Brett Burns, for example, the man who has been in so many contact hits, and there's so many NHL players around the league that wear, that don't wear a helmet during warm-ups. I understand, like you just mentioned, for that rule, but to me – I understand maybe it's just because, like I said, for player safety and along those lines. That's that's really but, what it is. Yeah, but, exactly. I mean, yeah. think about the other aspects. You got pucks shooting at you. I get that, but well, you it, also it really needs skates. to be. It really needs to be situational because in this situation, it was mm-hmm. the dude taking his, vic, you know, his, uh, not a victory lap, but his little uh, debut lap. You know, it's his rookie season, yeah. the first time he gets to go out during warmups. Give it's an exciting moment, uh, and I don't know if they forgot it or if they just said, "Nah, screw it." Uh, I'd like to hear that from them. I I didn't see anything that that showed them saying that, but I I did think it was a lot of fun and seeing NHL start off last night. Uh, that was exciting. Um, I'm excited to see the rest of the season start off. We've got more going on tonight, uh, so I'm gonna have to make sure to to tune in and and see what's going on there. Which also means we can start putting a little bit of wagers on hockey again. And I'm, I'm telling you, man, last season, last season, sports betting was was definitely a a strong suit in in the hockey season. So that mm-hmm. that was that was definitely a good time because you got games every night and you can sit there and yes. hey, you know what I like to do in in hockey, smash that over. Uh, so, I mean, honestly, I'm looking at it this year and, and especially seeing the way that some of the lineups are right now, uh, I could definitely see that being the, 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 the scenario this year too. Uh, just, just looking at it overall. Um, but yeah, I mean, what, I guess what, what teams are you most excited for in this, this hockey season starting off this year? Starting off this year, I would love to see the Washington Capitals. I'm a Washington Capitals fan, so I'm going to be a little bit biased here. I'd like to see them have a, have a nice, successful year. I know last year it was kind of a rocky situation. They just do pretty good, then go down a little bit of a rabbit hole. But outside of that, I'd like to see the Vegas Golden Knights bounce back. Obviously, your former Stanley Cup champions. And it, I'm going to throw this out there. If you didn't get a chance to see their banner raising, Go check it out on YouTube, Facebook, whatever. That was probably one of the coolest banner raisings I've seen in a long time. Having the the slot machine down the middle of the ice and then hitting the three Stanley Cups and having all the gold coins on the ice for their their amazing shout out to their videography crew and everybody along that roster. That's unbelievable. But yeah. Vegas, um, even Colorado, definitely another team, obviously. Nathan McKinnon um, and – there's so much depth on that roster as well. But even um, one other team that you've talked about before is the Seattle Kraken. They can yeah. definitely surprise a lot of people. And even one more team to add on is probably the New York Rangers. I know a lot of you people keep on talk throwing about out all the, all the teams. You're just going to go down and list every single team in the NHL and be like, well, I'm excited I mean, to see this if team we, and that team. If, <laughs> If we got enough time, I can just keep going and going yeah. and going. No, I mean, I know we honestly, got a show I'm, get to. I'm looking at the Rangers and what how the season ended, how how kind of some some of the off season moves. I'm kind of projecting a worse season. I'm gonna be rooting for them. Uh, I'm gonna be rooting the hell yeah. out of them, but I I just don't see. I don't think it's gonna be as good of a season. Uh, and they had a really My good big season. Thing last is, year. My big thing is if Shesterkin can stay consistent. 
Yeah. If he's going to be your starter, he's going to get you guys in the postseason oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. I think they can make it to the postseason. I just don't think it's going to be as strong of a push. And I also don't think you're mm-hmm. going to go into the postseason as hot as you were last year. Personally, I, yeah. I just don't. I don't. I don't know. Uh, it's just I'm. I'm not super fond of a lot of how last year ended. And then I'm trying to think too. I think we lost Tarasenko, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah. and you there might have been somebody people. else too. It's just in the off season, I didn't see a whole lot of moves. I haven't been able to dive into it and really look at, at all, everything that's gone on in the off season for NHL. It's just cause we've been so busy with everything else, especially with football mm-hmm. season starting and everything. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. Uh, I'm excited to see what the Rangers can put together. Uh, and, and you brought up Josh. the other, the other team I was going to bring up was the Seattle Kraken. Uh, seeing, seeing the Kraken, I think I think the Kraken is, a, is another team. They're just really fun, and we saw that in the playoffs last year where I think they are very aggressive in the way they play, and I think that's going to draw a lot of eyes to hockey uh, when, when you see a team play the way that they do. Josh, I want to throw this out there. I want your honest opinion. After Florida pulling off the biggest comeback – I shouldn't say comeback – the biggest career of probably – organization history what do you think the florida panthers can do for this upcoming season do you think they're going to bounce back and have another great year or do you think they're going to be mediocre yeah i i think looking down there and seeing what matthew uh, kachuk did it, i mean he went off and, and especially yeah. in the playoffs i think i think that brought attention to him and i think it helped him a lot too because he he was kind of uh what brent venables likes to call misfits uh misfits. A, a, a guy <laughs> that a guy that doesn't understand how special he is. And I think he's one of those guys. And I think the whole team was kind of that way. They, they didn't realize mm-hmm. how special they were and how special they could be. Uh, and so I, I think they come into this season. I think they come in, I'm going to project it. I think they make it to the playoffs as maybe, let's see what they, they came in as a seven seed last, last year, right? Yeah, they came in so, as the very last seed. Eight so, seed. so I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to project, oh yeah, an eight seed. Sorry. Uh, I, I'm going to project that they come in as like a, four or five seed this year. Five I th- seed. I think, yeah. I think they, they jump up and they, they have a better, a better regular season. And I think they're just going to be a consistent flow throughout the season rather than fight and claw right there at the end of the season, like they did last year. Um, but yeah. yeah, I mean, looking at it overall, I think the, the NHL, we're going to have a lot more to get to as the season rolls on. And as we see some things start to pan out kind of the way that we have with the MLB, I feel like we haven't been as good at jumping back over to the MLB, but we are going to talk on that tonight, uh, and let's go ahead and get into it because the MLB playoffs have, have been up upon us. If you've missed it, uh, you've been missing out a lot of fun, uh, and especially I'm going to start off with uh, the the Philadelphia, uh, or sorry, the the yeah the Philadelphia uh, Phillies, uh, the Phillies going against the uh, the Braves, the Atlanta Braves. That that whole that whole series so far started off very fun because the Phillies came out, they took down the Giants, and. It just seemed like you deflated the, the Braves, the, the team that everyone is expecting to win it all. And Bryce Harper being being the slayer himself, uh, he he had a, a phenomenal game. That first game really came out strong. And I think just overall the Phillies looked really strong. But then the Braves came out, and they came out in, in, in game two. And they're, they're playing again tonight. Uh I I have I don't, don't have the score pulled up uh, for me right now, so it's going to be a, a spoiler. Uh, but – uh, that that's going to be a game to watch because I think the Braves are going to start to click. I think they're going to finally get it into rhythm. Uh, my prediction is that the Braves are going to win again tonight, and I think it's going to be more of a secured win than it was last night. Last night, what was it? Uh, five to four? Did I uh, get five to four? Okay, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it was it was a close game, and it came down to the wire. But I think the Braves start to turn turn on the Jets. I think the Braves start to pull away. I think they end up closing the series out. Uh, and what a matchup for for the first matchup. Uh, you know, the, the, the runner up last year going against the team that that's supposed to win it all this year. Uh, I think that's a really fun matchup for the, for the Phillies and, and Braves. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's one way to summon it up, have what should have been a game changer of last year for the one team and have the team that's going to be, I shouldn't say going to be, they are the top seed and the top dogs this year. Um, the Atlanta Braves, they're, you can, you can talk so much about the Atlanta Braves with Ronald Acuna Jr., to say the least. Then even look out throughout their lineup, I mean, they're they're scary. And then, like you said, the first game was a little rocky for them, but then coming back and finding that rhythm again and showing up. I mean, you look at both of these teams, this is definitely going to be a fun series, to say the least. And correct me if I'm wrong, it's the best of five series, correct? Um, yes, I believe so. Uh, if, That's if what I, I thought. Correctly. But, I mean, you look at these guys and – night in night out they're trying to do their best that they can for both on the 
on the pitching side of the ball or the batting average side of the ball and even in the outfield. I mean, even little itty-bitty mistakes for, like, your infielders, that can cost you runs and that can even cost you anything really at this point coming down to the postseason. Man, and, and just like that, I look it up and I was totally wrong. Uh, the Phillies are winning right now on the bottom of the eighth, 10-2. to two. 10 to 2. My goodness. I really thought the Braves were going to come out uh and Woo! you know that that's 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 a tough loss to have in game 1 and you're going to come out win win a tough one in game 2 but now it's time to turn on the Jets. That, that's what I'm imagining. Um and then on the Six other game that's going on right now, you're uh, the Minnesota Twins losing 3 to 1 right now and and Houston the Houston Astros do have uh the 2 to 1 lead. It looks like they're probably going to take the 3-1 lead there. The the Twins have a chance. But it's 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 a tough one right now. Uh, it's a very tough one. Uh, but then going over to the Orioles Rangers right now, uh, just because that that one was over before I even got a chance to watch a game, uh, I expected the Orioles to come out and, and play a tough one, maybe push this one. But instead, they had, the Rangers swept them three to zero, uh, mm-hmm. and they they killed them in, on Tuesday night, uh, seven to one. So I mean that was. <laughs> Man, just looking at looking at the playoffs so far, man, it's 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 kind of it's panning out pretty similar to what I expected. Unless unless the Phillies end up pulling it off, the Phillies pull it off, that whole bracket that I that I imagine is totally out the window. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and looking looking over there, I I, I thought the Rangers would pull out. I, I man, I, I I was looking at that one. I wish I would have been able to to pay more attention to the Orioles uh, as, uh yeah yeah the Orioles Rangers or is that yeah yeah, yeah because the the Orioles Rangers matchup man that is so fun because the Orioles coming away with with such a a strong uh strong season and and, and doing as well as they did especially turning on the Jets the way that they did there towards mm-hmm. you know the middle of the season uh, and then the Rangers just looking tough all season long, making their way to the playoffs and going against the Orioles. That's that's a really fun matchup. And I looked at the Rangers, and I, th- I know Blake and I talked about them. Uh, and and that's that's a team, the Rangers. That's a team that I could see sneaking their way all the way, uh, just because of how tough they've played so far. Uh, so yeah, I mean, l- looking at these MLB playoffs, if you're a baseball fan at all, if you're a sports fan, I think these MLB playoffs are going to shake up to be a lot of fun. Especially, man, if we see an upset here tonight. All I'm saying is everything's bigger in Texas, and that is definitely including if you look at the score columns. But yeah, definitely, I'm on the same boat with you. I think Texas can definitely sneak into this, and they can shock a lot of people, just like Florida did last year in the Stanley Cup Finals. Well, and and if the Phillies do it, so I mean, there's still there's still another game to be played, even if the Phillies win tonight, mm-hmm. which it looks like they're going to. I don't know of any team that's going to be able to come back uh, after being down ten to two with one inning left, but. If if the Phillies end up winning this series, they take down the Giants that are supposed to win it all, the Braves. Uh, do you, do you see the the Phillies closing this out and being able to cruise on down to the to the, to the uh, World Series, or do you think the Phillies are going to kind of uh, you know? Because if you look at what they did last season in, in the playoffs uh, or in, in, the, in the the World Series, the postseason, World Series. yeah, you, you see. You see them start off strong like this, and they get all the way up there, and the Astros just handled business. Uh, so, I mean, do you, do you think the Phillies are a real contender? Because let's be honest, the Phillies started off really crappy this season. I, I didn't expect them to even make the playoffs midway through the season, let alone come up, and now you might take take down the Braves. Do you think they're going to be able to make some ruckus if they do pull this off? If they pull it off, I, I'm i still skeptical about it. Because, like, I was going to bring up what you said. The starting of the season for them – was not the best. Now, looking at this, obviously being a different, complete situation, with being up, like you said, ten to two, and being able to play. I think would they play tomorrow or would they play for uh, whatever? Um, they, I think they can. I think they're going to get lucky if they do. I know, obviously, the score is saying a little bit different right now, but overall, I think. I don't think they can if – there's just something telling me that they can't get get to this situation just because it's one thing to have a lead like that, but having a rocky season to begin with then throughout the entire year, it's kind of rough. But I sincerely think this is kind of a little bit of a luck of the draw. So if they make it through and whoever they play in the next series, I don't think they can – make it that I don't think they'll make it past the next series 
Yeah, looking at it right now, too, I mean, uh, the Diamondbacks are kind of surprised me a little bit because I thought the Dodgers, the Dodgers have a 100 win season and they're getting beat two to zero in the series right now. They play a little bit later on, about an hour. Uh, so we'll see what Gosh. ends up happening there. But I would I would expect the you, Dodgers to come back. I don't expect them to get swept in this series. Um, but, you know, just looking at the NLDS right now, too, I mean, that's it's a it's a, a tough one to get out of regardless of who you're going against. But if you end up knocking out the Braves personally, I don't think much stands in your way because the Braves are just that good. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Braves, like you said, they're that good. But being that good of a team, I think they can definitely bounce back. But I want to I want to tell you a little bit of something. You want to know why the Dodgers are not being successful right now? I hate saying it, but you can play Clayton Kershaw for that one. If yeah. you saw his last appearance, he got ate up like a dinner buffet. Literally, he put up six runs throughout three quarters. That was not normal Clayton Kershaw that we're used to seeing. We're used to Clayton Kershaw striking and throwing out Ks, but the only thing that he was throwing out was home runs and runs. Yeah, well, okay, so – Let's just let's just assume that the Phillies end up winning tonight, because let's be honest, I think okay. the Braves are going to be the favorite no matter who they go against in this this uh, yeah. World Series. So if yeah. if the Phillies end up winning tonight, they're up two to one against the Braves in the series. Do you think the Braves turn on the Jets and end up end up winning it? What's your prediction there? I think so. I think if the Braves turn on the Jets, they're sitting pretty good. They getting down this. to two to one though. That's that's tough in a five you know in a five game series. So yeah. I just I, I look Anything's at this. Possible. Yeah, I, I look at this, man. I, I I'm going to put my faith in the Braves. I think the Braves pull it out, and I think this just adds fuel to the fire. Hey guys, mm -hmm. we 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 thought that we had this, and we got too ahead of ourselves. Um, but at the same time, man, like I just feel like the Braves have done this a lot, uh, where yeah, they, they they have it all in front of them. It's all theirs for the taking, and they just don't close it out. Um, man, I, I don't know. It's 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 going to be fun, uh, and I, I'm definitely going to be tuned in on the MLB playoffs. But uh, Jeremy, do we have a do we have a little bit of a, a word from our friends over at SeatGeek? Oh, SeatGeek, SeatGeek, SeatGeek. We can talk about um, if you're a fan of live events, whether it's sports, music, theater, or whatever the situation. You know how challenging it can be to find the right ticket at the right price. That's where SeatGeek will definitely come into your factor. And it's a seamless mobile experience. SeatGeek allows you to buy and sell tickets just on taps. It doesn't get any simpler than that, ladies and gentlemen. I tell you what, I've used SeatGeek. Josh has used SeatGeek plenty of times. And SeatGeek is one of my go-to apps if I'm definitely going to an event. But it gets even better. SeatGeek grades every ticket from red to green based on value to help you immediately identify the best seats to fit your budget. Plus, every purchase is fully guaranteed, so you don't have to worry about that and shop securely with complete peace of mind. Now, we love SeatGeek so much. We've teamed up with them. And you can get an amazing offer. If you use our code down below, R2TO, you can get $20 off on your order. And that's right. Just download the SeatGeek app or visit SeatGeek.com. Pick out those perfect tickets and enter the promo code, like I said, R2T0 for, not zero, R2TO, excuse me, for $20 off. And I guarantee you, SeatGeek is lives events and we have your tickets and i'm gonna tell you right now you will not be disappointed with seat geek because i love them yeah yeah absolutely it's it's the easiest way to and, and what i love is that you know exactly where you're sitting uh, there are a mm -hmm. lot of these apps you just know generally where you're sitting until you purchase it then it's like oh i'm sitting way up here uh seat geek you yeah. can dial down to the seat uh, and they give you an amazing view from your seat they give you the, a very simple layout so you know what a good deal is by the color coding and everything uh, yeah, absolutely. SeatGeek.com or download the SeatGeek app and use code R2TO. Thank you very much to our friends over at SeatGeek for partnering up and sponsoring this episode. But man, it's halfway through the season. We just now dropped our power rankings, which I'm going to go on the record and say, I think I screwed up with my power rankings. I've, I've been thinking about those really? all week since we dropped them. And I was listening to Blake's and I was looking at it. And as I was making the graphic and posting it out there, I was like, man, I really like Blake's. And, and, and the more that I think about it too, what, what my gripe with, with power rankings are and, and with the AP poll is it's it's always about the undefeateds. 
Uh, I, I've been mentioning Josh Pate a lot on the show. I like Josh Pate. I'm, I'm hoping to get him on the show one day. Uh, I love Josh Pate. I love listening to his show. I, I drive a lot for work, and so I'm constantly listening to different podcasts, and most of the time it's sports podcasts. Uh, that's what I enjoy, and that's what I want to listen to. And so Josh Pate is one of those in the regular rotation, and he does his JP poll where he does a ratings system, and I really like the way his comes out. Uh, and I actually even posted his his ratings on the R2, uh, R2 on the uh, Rising to the Occasion. <laughs> uh, social medias too and, and just looking at his I like Josh Pate a lot uh, I don't quite agree with the ratings the way that the algorithm puts them together but I can appreciate it and looking at it overall I think the rankings and what my gripe has always been it shouldn't be just about you know who's undefeated so therefore uh, personally I'm, I'm going to go on the record and say I, I, I hate my pick of putting USC in the top 10 I think USC needs to be dropped out because watching USC I think they are garbage uh, I don't think they're going to win anything. Looking at their schedule, man, they've got some tough ones. They've got Washington and Oregon and Notre Dame and Utah left on the schedule. I don't know if they're going to make a, make out of that alive because their defense is so atrocious. They just went into three overtimes with a, a losing program in Arizona. Uh, so I just wanted to go on the record and say that uh, I, I agree with some of the comments about about my rankings uh, because I, I heard I heard quite a few. Uh, talking about it uh, between belly up personnel and uh, and even from different different comments on social media and and on on YouTube and all that. Um, so I, I hear you and I agree with you. I, I'm, I'm going to start putting the rankings the way that I actually think. Whenever as a fan, uh, how I wish the rankings were. I still do, I still do stand by my top eight. I believe. I just think I would probably put Alabama up there at either. Uh, ten or nine, depending on how I how I mixed it up. Really, but I, I, I do I do like Alabama up there because you look at how they they performed. I think they performed really well against Texas A and M in in a tough environment. Uh, and so and I think they turned things around this year this week too and and have another big game against Arkansas, uh, which okay. I should have put that in my uh, top bets, my best bets, but it's not. But let's go ahead and get into. Uh, let's first start off with Heisman watch. I'm going to put another graphic out for our Heisman watch. Jeremy, do you want to start us off with your Heisman watch uh, for through weeks, or I guess a week seven? So through week six, week seven Heisman rankings. All right. My first one, go, I'm starting off number five here. My number five Heisman watch, I have Mr. Georgia, and that is Brock Bowers. I know, obviously, everyone's heard him say he's Mr. Georgia, and just from what you've seen him produce on the football field, he is definitely a great, great candidate for a Heisman, in my opinion. I know a lot of people, there's been talk about um, so many other tight ends, but, I mean, the way I see Brock Bowers play and finding that open field and giving conversions to first downs and even putting points on the board, he's definitely becoming a great tight end, and he has been a great tight end, to say the least. But this year is definitely his big year, in my opinion, so far. But going to number four, I have Boomer Sooner, Dylan Gabriel. Gabe, Dylan Gabriel, he's definitely shown up, to say the least, for Oklahoma Sooners. And he's put up good numbers for the Oklahoma Sooners. And coming after this weekend for going against the Red River rivalry, he definitely showed why he should be definitely ta be talked about for a Heisman candidate. But number three, I have Blake's favorite, Mr. Bo Heisman, Bo Nix, up in Oregon country. Bo Nix has been definitely putting up some fantastic numbers, to say the least. And Bo Nix, whether he's using his feet or if he's using his fantastic arm, as you've probably seen on ESPN or highlights or whatever you're watching on social media, he's definitely been showing off. And like I said, he's definitely a type Heisman candidate. But my number two, I think we're probably going to get a lot of repeats here. But um, my number two is Michael Penix Jr. And I know that's going to be a really, really fun game for what they got going against Bo Nix this upcoming weekend. That's going to be a gunslinger battle. That's going to be my game I'm going to be glued onto for when it comes time for that game. But my number one, I kind of I kind of regret it a little bit, but I still have Caleb Williams as number one on my Heisman Trophy candidate. I know, obviously, with what USC has done so far this season, it's really been the Caleb Williams show, whether he's scrambling inside, inside the pocket. His Q, QB IQ is unbelievable, whether he's getting a lot of time in the pocket or if he's having to make a scramble or – Whatever the situation is, he's throwing off blockers. He's definitely he's definitely a really, really good quarterback. I was obviously we've all known and seen him do. But Caleb Williams, he's definitely 
one of my five, like I just listed off for you guys. He's definitely a good Heisman candidate, but that's my top five Heisman candidates as of right now. I know there's definitely some chances that could change, but Josh, what do you yeah. have for your top five? Yeah, it's going to change. And I really like that you threw Brock Bowers in there because he was actually in my honorable mentions. I was going to put him in there and make sure he was in an honorable mention. Uh, before I get to mine, uh, Blake actually just texted me his over. So uh, I was, I was oh. waiting for him to send it over. I'm going to start, I'll start off with his first. Uh, and, and I like okay. the way that he, he, he did it. I think we're, we're all very similar. Uh, we've got we all have four of the same, uh, and Blake actually has five of the same ones as me, just in a, in a different order. So I'm going to start off with number five for Blake. He's got Dylan Gabriel. Uh, I like that one. That's a good good pick. And then he's got Caleb Williams down at number four. Uh, I don't disagree with that, and I think you could argue that Caleb Williams shouldn't be ranked number one because USC is not very good. I'm going to rank him at number one too. Uh, I'll give a spoiler for mine. I, I ranked him at number one too. I just think the overall intangibles, the, the tangibles that he, that he, he gives on the field, the, the things that he does that nobody else can, can provide you. That's why I have him ranked number one with you. Uh, it's not necessarily his stats and I don't think stats tell everything. And that's why I feel like Caleb Williams should be at number one right now, but I'm, I'm with you. I think after they get a couple of losses, he jumps down to number four or five, maybe out of the race, depending on, on how yeah. he performs in those losses. Um, but number three, he has Jaden Daniels, uh, another guy that, you know, from LSU, another guy. And, and I, the, here's another thing, too. I hate that it's a quarterback award, which is why I, I really love that you threw in a tight end and Brock Bowers. Um, but it's just so tough when you when you compare because who is the most the most valuable on the field? It's it's the quarterback. And so how do you rank another player above him? He's really got to show up uh, if he's going to if he's going to get up here. And I think Brock Bowers makes that case. Uh, so I, I like that you have him in the top five, but up to his number two. Can you take a pick? Hmm. It's not Joe. It's not. Here? It's not Joe Wicks. It's not John Wick. It's not hmm. Bo Picks. It is Bo Nix, and he's not Bo Picks anymore, boys, because he only has one interception uh, on the season so far, and he he actually does put up very good numbers. Uh, and, and I'll talk a little bit more about Bo Nix whenever I get to it. But then he's at number one, Blake has Michael Penix Jr. So I like his top five quite a bit. I'll make sure to put that in the graphics so everybody can see it. I'm going to jump over to my top five real quick, and I'll explain why I, I ranked them where they are. And I'm going to start off with number five. I've got Jaden Daniels as well from LSU. I know LSU has a couple of losses on the season, but Jaden Daniels has performed extremely well. Uh, I talk about two things with quarterbacks. Uh, that is efficiency and effectiveness. Uh, so, or uh, sorry, efficiency and crap. What am I? Why, why am I drawing drawing a Blake? Uh, efficiency, and there's another e word, but that's not that. It's not effectiveness. Wow, forget what I even said there. Um, <laughs> but basically, being effective and being efficient. That might be what it, what I mean. Uh, effective and efficient. So you're being efficient. You're uh, being no, because that is the same word. I don't know. We're just gonna we're just gonna throw it out there. But anyways, he is he's very he's very good with the ball. He's not turning the ball over a lot this year. He's also completing a, a high percentage of his balls. He's sitting at seventy two point nine percent with two thousand three hundred ninety six total yards, twenty four touchdowns, and only two picks on the on the season. So Jaden Daniels, I think he deserves to be in that Heisman talk. If LSU loses maybe one or two more, he probably pushes himself out and, and it makes room for another another person because I think Heisman winner needs to propel his team to win uh, and, and he's not doing it so far. Uh, he is being the key factor on his team, which is why I have him up there. But now I go up to number four. I've got Bo Nix. Uh, I like Bo Nix a lot. I think he deserves to be in the Heisman talk and I think he has a lot of room to be pushed up. And I think the only reason why he's not as high right now for me is because uh, if I remember correctly, Oregon just had a bye week this past weekend. So looking yes. at Bo Nix, he's sitting at 80.4% completion percentage, 80% on throwing the ball. He's got 1,582 yards through the air, 17 total touchdowns, or sorry, 1,582 total yards, 17 total touchdowns, only throwing one pick on the on the season, as I mentioned a moment ago. And going up to number three, another Pac-12 quarterback. I've got Michael Penix Jr. ranked at number three. I don't have him as high because I think he does show some intangibles, but the dude doesn't run the mu as much. He he does have legs. He can run. He's very good at at, at, at getting out of pressure and and extending the play. But he's not been running down the field this season, which is surprising. But 
it's it's interesting too. But he doesn't do as much. So, uh, but he's still been throwing. He, he threw for he's got two thousand and eight yards so far on seventy four percent and sixteen total touchdowns. I like Michael Penix Jr. I think he is right up there. Honestly, I have the top three four guys really really close to each other, and, and any one of them could jump. I feel like it's all just a tiebreaker at this time, at this point. Uh, but then number yeah. two, I'm going to put Dylan Gabriel's. I think he deserves to be up in this talk. I think he deserves to be ranked very high because I think he's been showing his efficiency throughout uh, throughout the season so far. Uh, I think he's been showing how good he is with the ball and how he how he has improved from last season. Uh, and, and he is the key player on the field, and it showed in the Texas game. Without his performance, he doesn't beat Texas, and I think the way that he showed his poise against Texas, uh, he absolutely deserves to be up there. 72%. Uh, 72.3 to be exact, 2,086 total yards, 21 total touchdowns, and only two interceptions. An amazing season. And for number one, I've got Caleb Williams as all as, uh, as well, uh, as I mentioned a moment ago. He's got 71%, which is really shocking uh, with with how clean he is with the ball. 71%. Anytime you can reach that 70, 70% mark, that's extremely well for any quarterback. Huge. Uh, but then Caleb Williams only has 1,946 total yards, but he's got 28 total touchdowns that he's responsible for, and he's only throwing one pick. So he's being he's being very careful with the ball. He's he's getting the ball down the field and into the end zone a lot. Uh, so just watching how he plays. Like I said, the reason why I have him up there, I know he doesn't have quite as many yards, and especially if you compare him with Jaden Daniels, but he just has those intangibles that you just can't coach. Uh, and he's he's a special talent, and so I've I've got to give it to him. I don't want to put him up there at number one, but he's up there at number one. So that's yeah. our Heisman top five. We want to hear from you guys. Uh, who has the best top five? Who would you not be ranking in the top five? Who would you be ranking in the top five? Uh, did you have any honorable mentions? My honorable mention was um, LSU quarterback. Okay. Um, yeah, but he's Jayden definitely Daniels, shown. Yeah. Yeah, Jaden Daniels. He was definitely my honorable mention. He's definitely progressed in this season. Then he's he's definitely had a successful year so far. I know stat wise, everyone looks always looks at stats, but stats doesn't mean anything to us. We always like to see the quarterback on TV and how he performs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I will say another another honorable mention that's up there is Quinn Ewers. He he did have a very good game against Oklahoma, but throwing two picks that kind of bumps you out of the top mm. five for me. Uh, yeah. and, and the way that you just folded under pressure in that game, that didn't happen in, a, against Alabama. So I, I, I need to see him improve throughout the season. I think he's st- he's still an honorable mention, though. Uh, and then another one was Jordan Travis. Jordan Travis is being really good at quarterback, and he's helping his team win. He's just not putting up quite the numbers that these top five guard, top five guys are for me. So Jordan Travis over at Florida State, too. Uh, and then another yeah. one that I wanted to throw in there was Brock Bowers, but you already mentioned him in, the, in, in your top five, and so I love it. Uh, hopefully he can keep on going because that, that dude is an animal. But let's get to best bets of college football week seven. Uh, I do not know what Blake was going to put as his his top, his best bets. on. So we were just going to go just off of you and me, Jeremy. Let's start off. Uh, you go ahead and start off with number three. What do you got for number three on your best bets this weekend? My number three, I have Auburn versus LSU. And I chose the under on this one. The under right now is at 61. But I know looking at Auburn and what they did against Georgia, I know Auburn, they've definitely got their feet rolling so far right now. Looking at Georgia, I know they definitely, they didn't come out with the win against Georgia. It was still a really good game on both sides of the ball. But Auburn, they definitely need to keep that feet their feet rolling to stay on the momentum side. Then looking at LSU, like we just said, they – they can get going, but they need to get going from the get go, not after the second, not after the second quarter, going through halftime. They definitely need to find that first gear and get it going right from the get go. But I'm thinking this game more like a like a twenty eight to thir- I mean twenty eight to twenty one kind of game. What but was what was the total? I think it's still gonna be. It was sixty one. Sixty one, man. That is that's a really good line for that game. I like that because yeah. LSU's been been on fire on offense. But Auburn's defense is good. We're going to talk about that game, too, so I don't want to give any spoilers away. Uh, and then hopefully, as long as everything goes well, we should have Jake Crane on with us. Uh, well, he's, he's going to be a pre-recorded uh, jumping in on Saturday, too. So it's, it's going to be a very fun matchup to go uh, to, to talk about. And I wanted to talk about Auburn sometime throughout the season, and I think this is a really good time to do it. Uh, and I'm excited Definitely. for that matchup. So, yeah, I, I, I think I like the under in that game because Auburn's not going to put up a lot of points. 
and I don't think they let LSU run all over them. And so I think the defense is going to be strong enough. That's been their strong point this year. So I like that one. Yeah. Uh, going over to my number three pick, uh, right now I have got West Virginia money line. I'm going to throw that one in there. I had another one that I wanted to. I talked to you about that, Jeremy. I'm just going to go with West Virginia West Virginia money line minus 140 versus Houston. Uh, I like I like this pick. I think West Virginia has been looking very good so far. Uh, they've had some surprising wins. I think Pitt was one of them. Uh, their only loss on the season so far, uh, I do believe, and and I may be wrong on this because I don't remember who they played last weekend if they if they did play. But their only their only loss was to Penn State before this last weekend. Uh, so don't don't uh, hate on me if because I don't remember for sure, but. Uh, West Virginia has been looking good. Neil Brown, hey, I, I'm, I'm liking what's what's cooking over there. So just you know, just looking over at, at West Virginia, I think they pull it out against Houston. Houston has not been impressive. Uh, welcome to the Big 12, big boys, because West Virginia is going to beat you this weekend, sitting at minus 140. So that's the one I like over there uh, in that little Big 12 matchup over there. Uh, what's your number two pick, Jeremy? My number two... I have a really good matchup for this one. I have Oregon versus Washington. I'm sticking with the money line for Oregon on this. One. Ooh. And I'm I'm trying to pull up the um the plus minus ratio here. Yeah, but so I, I think they the odds are not in their favor right now. I think last I checked they were yeah. like a three point underdog. So yeah, uh, I like you picking the underdog. I don't disagree with it either. I like the Yeah, pick. I mean, you look at both of these teams, like I said earlier, it's going to be a gunslinger battle between Bo Heisman, Bo Nix, and Michael Penix Jr. But I think my big thing is if Oregon and Washington, if they're going to be covered, I think Bo Nix is going to show off his legs compared to Michael Penix Jr. Like you just said, he hasn't been running a lot this year. He's been mainly sticking to the air game. So I think with both of these teams, if they get to the running game for their quarterbacks, I think Oregon's going to take it with Bo Nix, and he's going to show off his talent and use those legs. Man, I've been I've been scared to put any wagers on that game, too. I keep on looking at that one, and I'm like, man, Oregon's an underdog. I want to pick them to win so bad, mm-hmm. but Vegas has been kicking my butt this year. And, and I keep on looking at ones yeah. like that that I'm like, man, they're an underdog. Ooh, I don't know about that. And then and then Vegas beats me. And then there's been other ones where I'm like, okay, I think I, I think I like where Vegas is going with this, picking this team to win. And I pick yeah. them, and then they lose. Like, come on, why couldn't you give me the underdog last time then? <laughs> like, man, uh, I'm going to go to my number two. Oh, go ahead. Before you get to before you get to your number two, I just found it out. Oregon is sitting at plus one one twenty four, and Washington is sitting at minus one forty eight here. So this is okay. going to be pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean it's 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 almost a coin flip for it, uh, really, based on the odds. Literally, it's it's very close to a, a coin flip. Uh, so yeah, I, I like that mm-hmm. game a lot. Uh, my number two pick here today. Let's see, I am going to pick up, and I'm I'm going to make. My in-laws, and I'm going to make my wife proud. I'm going to say Ohio State to beat Purdue and cover the spread. I'm going to pick Ohio State minus 19 and a half. They had a very good second half against Maryland. Uh, you can blame the rain all you want, but hey, Ryan Day just didn't wake his boys up in the morning. Uh, so I think I think Ohio State comes out, and I think they're going to pumble Purdue. I don't. I'm not very impressed by Purdue. They lost to Iowa last week, and kind of a disappointing matchup there. Yeah, made it made it a close game, but. I think Purdue sitting at two and two, two and two and three right now. I think if I remember correctly. Three, I so l- looking at looking at what they've got right now, I'm not very high on Purdue. I don't really like anything that's going on over there. Uh, Hudson Card. That's about the only thing I got for you. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm picking OSU. I'm picking the Buckeyes to cover that 19 and a half point spread. Win win it by 20, Buckeyes. Uh, what do you got for number? Uh, let's see, your number one pick, right? Yes, my number one pick, I have Go Blue versus Indiana, and I'm picking the over on this one at 45 and a half. I mean, you look at just Michigan alone, what they've done this season, they can probably hit that just in general by themselves. But Indiana, they've they definitely had their name out there. So I think between both J.J. McCarthy and the quarterback for Indiana, I think they can both rack up some serious points here so i see something like that i'm pulling a josh and i am smashing the over on this one yeah i like that pick uh i didn't realize that line was so slow i did or so slow so low uh i did i didn't see that one so i i like that pick because for one you know i like to smash the over 
Uh, and number two, yeah, I agree with you. I think I think Michigan's kind of starting to get their rhythm too. I think they're going to start rolling over teams, and they've been covering the spread mm-hmm. quite a bit this year. They've been beating teams yeah, by twenty. Have. So what's what's to say Michigan can't come out and, and win this thing forty two to eighteen and, and just smash that spread? Uh, so yeah, yep. I like that one a lot. Uh, my number one pick, I'm going to go with the Washington Oregon game. But I am not going to go money line like you did. Okay. I am going to go with the points total. I'm going to go over with Oregon, uh, the Washington Oregon. I'm going to go with the over. I'm going to smash the over. It's in a 67 and a half. These are two very high Ooh. powered offenses. I think that's kind of low, and it keeps on kind of dropping. Uh, so I like that really? people are, t- are, are taking it. So because uh, I think it started off at 60, 67 and a half. I think I saw it at 67 uh, just before we started recording. But I'm taking. I took it at 67 and a half already. Uh, I put a little bit of wager on that one. So I like Oregon Washington to rack up some points. I think both teams can score 30 points easy in this game. Uh, so 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 looking looking at, at 30 some points apiece. Uh, I, I easily see this one getting up into into the 70s as a total. Uh, I'm I'm a little shocked that it's so low, but that's where that's where Vegas gets me. Uh, so be careful with what you're you're picking. Uh, and and again, we we always like you guys to go on and, and again, you can go to rising2.com/bet. That's r i s i n g t o.com/bet. You can go there and check out all of the sports books that are available in your region. And you can also, whenever you click on those through those sports books and sign up through those links. It will automatically add the most exclusive offers for each sports book uh, directly to you. So, I mean, you, you get bonus bets, all kinds of fun stuff. So go over there and check it out. Rising2.com slash bet, R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O dot com slash B-E-T. It shows you all of the most exclusive offers for all the sports books available to you. You get signed up uh, and put a little bit of a wager on the game. But we, again, we only condone responsible betting. Please be responsible with it. Yes, don't sir. don't be going out there putting your life savings on the line. Uh, whenever we talk about bets that we're making, most of the time we put five, ten, fifteen bucks on the on the line. Maybe twenty five if we're feeling pretty confident. Uh, and and we we don't we don't sit there and and gamble with hundreds or even thousands of dollars. Uh, we're not made of that kind of money. And if you're not made of that kind mm-hmm. of money, it's it's, it's it's not that you can't bet with that and be responsible. Uh, it's it's knowing what's in your bank account, uh, and, and it's it's knowing what what in the sports betting world they call your bankroll. Know what your bankroll is and and roll that out. Uh, so you know if if I'm looking at these top three bets that we've put out this week, I might I, I'm not going to parlay all of them. I don't, I don't think that's a smart move. Whenever you're talking uh, talking some some tough bets to be made, uh, especially in college football right now, whenever everybody's starting really mm-hmm. starting to to start show their separation, uh, you, you you place a little wager, maybe five dollars on each of these these games, and see what you you can get out of it. Uh, and it's just the the fun that you get out of it. Uh, so again, please be responsible with betting, but you can go to rising2.com slash bet and find the most exclusive offers on all the best sports books in your region. But everybody, if you have been watching up to this point, we thank you so much for tuning in with us, for uh, for coming along with the ride. Guys, we have been growing tremendously lately. I think in the last month, we've had over 2,000 subscribers. I don't know where you guys come from. I don't know what you guys are doing and why you guys like us, but we enjoy it. Uh, and we keep on trying to put out more and better content because of that subscriber count going up. So we thank you all so much for your love, for your support. Uh, and if you are watching on YouTube and you haven't hit that subscribe button, make sure to hit that subscribe button and go ahead and hit that like button because that actually helps us more than you know. So if you're already subscribed and looking for a way to help us out, you can hit that like button. You can follow us on social media, Facebook, uh, X, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. Uh, You can follow us on there. We're going to be churning out some more content on the social media side of things and trying to grow over there. So please help us out there. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, you can give us a five-star review, uh, which, hey, yeah, I forgot to, to read off reviews, but I'm going to be reading off reviews here very soon. Uh, I'm going to bring up those reviews because I appreciate the kind words that you guys have been giving to us. You can also go to our website, rising2.com. That's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O.com. And you can leave a review on the website too. It doesn't help us a whole uh, out a whole lot on there, but we get to look at it and see that you appreciate what we're doing. So guys, again, we thank you so much for all the support. Until next time.